Raphael and thanks for watching. Sometimes science tries to explain something belonging to the world of religion and philosophy. In this case the consciousness. And this is one of those theories I promised I would go into more detail about. So what is the holonomic brain theory all about? Well keep watching and you might learn something. It is a model of human cognition that describes the brain as a holographic storage network developed by neuroscientist Carl Primbum in the collaboration with physicist David Bohm. The processes involve electric oscillations in the brain, fine fibered dendritic webs, waves that create wave interference patterns in which memory is encoded naturally. There are similarities between these brain processes and the storage of information in a hologram. In a hologram, any part of the hologram with sufficient size contains the whole of the stored information. In this theory, a piece of long-term memory is similarly distributed over a dendritic arbor, so that each part of the dendritic network contains all the information stored over the entire network. Both processes of storage and retrieval are carried out in a way described by Fourier transformation equations. An analogy to this is the broadcasting region of a radio antenna. In each smaller individual location within the entire area it is possible to access every channel, similar to how the entirety of the information of a hologram is contained within a part. Another analogy of the hologram is the way sunlight illuminates objects in the visual field of an observer. It doesn't matter how narrow the beam of sunlight is. The Fourier transform formula converts spatial forms to spatial wave frequencies and vice versa. This non-locality of information storage within the hologram is crucial because even if most parts are damaged, the entirety will be contained within even a single remaining part of sufficient size. Primbram and others noted the similarities between an optical hologram and memory storage in the human brain. According to the holonomic brain theory, memories are stored within a certain general region, but stored non-locally -loc within those regions. This allows the brains to maintain functions and memories even when it's damaged. Primbram proposed that neural holograms were formed by the diffraction patterns of oscillating electric waves within the cortex. He does not suggest that the brain functions as a single hologram, rather the waves within smaller neural networks create localized holograms within the larger workings of the brain. In classic brain theory, the summation of electrical inputs to the dendrites and the soma, the cell body of a neuron either inhibit the neuron or excite it and set off an action potential down the axon to where it synapses with the next neuron. This is evidence, however, of the existence of other kinds of synapses, including serial synapses and those between dendrites and soma and between different dendrites. Many synaptic locations are functionally bipolar, meaning they can both send and receive pole impulses. The processes occur due to the oscillations of polarizations in the membrane of the fine fiber dendrites. Primbram posits that the length of the delay of an input signal is related to the mental awareness. The shorter the delay, the more unconscious the action. Primbram and others theorize that while unconscious behavior is meditated by impulses through nerve circuits, conscious behavior arises from microprocesses in the dendritic arbor. The dendritic network is extremely complex, allowing a polarization to spread without much interruption. These polarizations act as waves in the synaptodendritic network, and the existence of multiple waves at once give rise to the interference patterns. Primbram suggests that there are two layers of cortical processing, a surface structure of separated and lo localized neural circuits, and a deep structure of the dendritic arborization that binds the surface structure together. The deep structure contains distributed memory, while the surface structure acts as a retrieval mechanism. 
Holographic and holonomic processes are holistic as their names imply. This grasps the interest of humanists and some philosophers and scientists, resulting in two different forms of holistic views. In biology and psychology, there is the saying that the whole is more than and different from the sum of its parts. Reductionists and materialist scientists and philosophers like this because they can try to reduce the higher order to the lower ones, either as to their properties or the theoretical terms that describe their relations. But there is a more holistic view that states patterns spread everywhere and everywhere to entangle the parts with one another, which means space and time no longer exist and therefore neither does causality. It is this non-absolute nature of consciousness that breeds the world around it, which illustrates the holographic nature of consciousness itself and thus maintains that the world is, is within and is an illusion, a fractal hologram. So why can't you put your hand through a solid form? Because the consciousness breeds energy and apparent physical barriers. Now the fun part begins. Well, for me anyway. <laughs> what do you think? Is this theory just a theory? Is it only a way the brain stores memories forming the basis for your consciousness? Or does your consciousness create the world you live in? And are we just living in an illusion? Your thoughts and opinions are much appreciated, so drop a line in the box below. Just be respectful in the comments as there are real people with real feelings on the other side. There is a lot more to tell about this topic than I covered in a small vid. And if you wish to do your own research, the links of my sources in the description might be a good start. If I forgot something or you have something to add, don't hesitate to do so. If you enjoyed this vid, you can like and share and subscribe and you may want to click that little bell to receive notifications. I have my You Decide channel you might want to check out. And from my corner of this science world to yours, I hope to see you next time. Bye!